Hello, everybody. I am thinking about starting a new series on tarot and it's going to be an entire playlist dedicated to tarot and tarot definitions explanations you may or may not know i have over 20 years of experience i was not led to tarot until i was um actually had had my somatic release and i had become aware of some of life's difficulties and challenges and i had been working through them I'd also come to realize I was a medium and I had met my spirit guide. These are things that I recommend before anyone starts to embark on reading tarot because you're basically tapping into your Akashic records. I still don't find that it's really that easy and I really depend on my guides to tell me what is going on. Now, I started out with a simple Celtic cross spread for quite a few months, and then eventually I decided I would do the expanded version. And then I was led one day to grab another card at the very end of the top of the 20 cards and add a 21st card over the first card giving it a 21 card spread and to me it actually looked more like a cross i believe that is the original version but you know i'll have to talk about that later i became fascinated with card combinations because they gave more information you're still going to be limited by the amount of information you're getting sometimes you can do um, a different kind of a spread to validate what it is you're think you're seeing in the cards and I have done that that can be helpful as well so learning different kinds of spreads is another thing I primarily do the Celtic cross expanded version and rely on my guides to tell me what I need to know so here is a card combination that has come up today and I thought I would share it with you here we have two major arcana cards coming up. The devil and the tower. When two cards come up like this together, whether they're underneath, above, to the left, or in this case, to the right, side by side, this is fate. Well, it doesn't look very good, does it? The tower's not always bad. When I first started this channel, I tried to start this channel in 2012, and I was sharing my love of tarot and encouraging people to use tarot for tarot spells to uh, achieve a goal. <clears throat> Excuse me. I started getting trolls and I didn't know how to handle it. Weird, weird stuff. I didn't know anything about what was going on. One of my first videos, I described how uh, sandalwood attracts good spirits and somebody was uh, arguing with me about it when I described that I had smelled sandalwood and seen spirits come out in the hallway as though they wanted to show me who they were or they were guarding the apartment where the family was their ancestors had come out to sort of guard that apartment so as you see here I have an incense stick and you might want to burn incense either to connect to your ancestors for protection or you want to get some information from them and ask them to help you with something. The tower usually denotes something very sudden and shocking, although you may have already felt like things weren't quite right. You've been on shaky foundation for a while and something's got to give. Now, this could be you finally making a decision. This could be a grand realization, right? Nothing's going to change if I don't change it. And in this way, one of your limitations, one of your constraints, one of your ideas that is causing you to feel chained is going to be 
released. So one thing I've read in one of the many books that I've read on tarot in the beginning, the chains around those two people are loose. And all you have to do is really pull them up and over and be liberated. So the tower can be a card of liberation. Now here you may be able to see I have a a picture frame here of Archangel Raphael. You can absolutely get a candle holder with a picture of an angel, an archangel like my, Michael or Raphael and have that there as well while you are doing your card readings. I highly recommend that. <clears throat> So this could be a situation that actually occurs where you're able to see things in a new way. And it might be a little bit scary. It's something you've got to do. You're venturing into new territory. Let me tell you a story. I had a second part-time job that was buffering me from having to do the substitute teaching five days a week. That's very hard. The kids don't know you. They know you don't know them, and they're going to be on their worst behavior. It was really draining me, and I was still healing from narcissism, narcissistic abuse. I was newly divorced, and I was raising my 11-year-old daughter. But as time went on, I'd say about four years later, she moved away. She graduated high school. And I realized, you know, I've done long, some long-term assignments and I've made more money. I've had too many problems at this little part-time grocery store job. It was not a good company. And I finally just bit the bullet and I turned in my resignation. And this time it was final. I wasn't taking two weeks off. They asked me to take two weeks off and think about it. They didn't want me to take away the money that I was contributing to the profit sharing plan. So I cashed out my 401k and I paid off one of my bills for the month and then I started doing Instacart. I was off for the summer. I kind of enjoyed finally just not having to go to work six days a week or having to work this little job more than I wanted to in the summer. It wasn't easy and I had some difficulties. And those difficulties actually continued as I started in August back to substitute teaching. And I did get long-term assignments, five days a week and then another five days. And I did end up making more money than I'd ever made before working the two jobs. However, I was just exhausted. So I could only work that job a certain number of days out of the week. Without, you know, getting to the point where I was physically having a breakdown. I was still healing from narcissistic abuse, a lifetime of it. So what ended up happening was my house began to slowly fall apart. It needed a new toilet, then the lights went out in the front of the house. I couldn't keep up my bills, even though I had been making more money. I fell behind. My youngest had moved away. She didn't like the idea of helping me pay any of the bills anyway. And I wasn't able to get any type of help from anybody else. And I did go back on economic assistance, but it was too late. I was so far behind. What ended up happening was I realized it was time to sell the house. My kids were gone and I didn't need it. And this took another six months of me actually selling most of my furniture, getting caught up on my bills and the lot rent so that I wouldn't lose my mobile home. So once you make a decision, it's going to start a ball rolling. And in order for you to feel the complete liberation from that decision, 
it could involve other areas of your life breaking down. But you need to be committed to the process. Whatever new things are coming into your life are going to be better for you. Now, I was fortunate in that I was strong enough to handle doing these things all by myself as an older person with a lot of life experience. At the last minute, I had two friends offer assistance in helping me finish cleaning the house, gathering up little items, putting them in boxes, and loading up the U-Haul truck. My house also sold at the very last minute in the month of May, and I was able to go and get a place in June. And it was, it was scary, and that's what the tower can represent. Change is not an event. It is a process. But it, the, ball, the ball starts rolling once you make the decision, I have to get out of this constraint that I have been under. And if it takes nine months for me to get through it, well, you know, then I'm going to commit to it. And a lot of times it takes longer than that. It can take a year. It can take a year and a half for you to rebuild your life. Change is an ongoing process anyway. But that, that is what is going on here. And believe it or not, it, no matter how hard it is, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be wiser. And you're going to realize you do not have to stay in a situation where people are not listening. They're not supporting you. You're, maybe you're overqualified for your job. Maybe you've been yelled at for no good reason. And it's time to get out of it, no matter what. All right, that's it for today. Let me know if you'd like me to continue the series on tarot and create a playlist. I know there's a lot of people that are interested in that. Talk to you later.